When our founders coined the term the Garden State, they likely didn't envision trays of plants and artificial light, but these have become the symbols of an alternative farming movement that's on the rise in New Jersey. Organic, sustainable farming that connects fresh produce with the communities it feeds. A pioneer in this movement is Aero Farms, the world's largest vertical farm located right in Newark. Aero Farms is using a system called aeroponics, where instead of sun and soil, crops are grown with LED lighting and nutrient-enriched water. Aero Farms plans to open its 10th and largest space in Camden later this year. I think that New Jersey is definitely doing a lot in terms of our vertical farming. I mean, they have a huge one up in Newark, which is Aero Farm, which is really paving the way for, you know, these urban farms. One of those new farms is Indigro, founded by Patrick Igliotti and Lou Monti, right in their Cherry Hill home. I said, I wonder if we can grow microgreens in our house. Like, I wonder if that's something that's possible. So we did a little bit more research and, you know, we realized that it probably was possible. Patrick says microgreens are huge in the culinary scene today. The first reason is they look pretty. All the different colors, you know, the pinks, the purples, the yellows, all that different stuff. And the second reason is they do have really intense flavor profiles. So a lot of them, you know, like arugula for instance, the flavor, the pepperiness that you're going to get from that is going to be like five to ten times the intensity that you're going to get from regular arugula. So that, those types of flavors, that's what the chefs are, you know, really you know, looking for. Microgreens mature very quickly. This crop will be fully grown in just about two weeks. The average lettuce takes a minimum of 45 days, some 60, some even longer to mature. Faster turnaround means more product to sell. I like to say seed to feed anywhere from 10 to 14 days for most things. And from the time you cut it to the time it's actually served on a plate, what is that time usually? Usually less, I mean, we deliver in less than a day. So we usually harvest same day or if not, like the night before. Gigliotti and Monty wanted a sustainable model because they're concerned about the future of the farming industry. There's only so much farmland the viability of that, of that soil, I mean, four, five, six generations from now, who knows if that soil is even going to have any nutrients left? Who knows if you're going to be able to add nutrients to it? This is what I think the future is going to be. This is the big aha moment. A lack of space didn't stop one farmer from setting up crop. He's partnered with local homeowners, essentially leasing their backyards, planting a variety of crops, and creating a micro farm. I thought it was a great uh, business model to adopt uh, because uh, in New Jersey, uh, property is expensive. And so I said, well, I can't just, uh, I'm not in a position to buy farmland right now. So I, I'll, I'll just go ahead and approach my neighbors and see if they're open to it. Daniel Cortez has expanded Microherb into four yards across several towns in Gloucester County, just south of Camden. He provides the homeowners with $20 worth of produce from each harvest. And to make the most of his small space, Cortez grows crops that mature in 50 days or less. I don't have the time or space to grow corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes. So what I do grow is lettuce, uh, radishes, beets. In the summer I do summer squash, uh, tomatoes. It's all quick growing, arugula, spinach, uh, lettuce, mainly a lot of greens. What I'm bringing is a, a new model that is still hasn't uh, caught on yet because people are looking at uh, that when they think of farm, they think of a conventional farm out in the rural area. So this is more bringing the farm into the community uh, so people can start to reconnect with where their food comes from and how it's grown. Tony Gibbons has revitalized this dilapidated greenhouse in Newark's Branch Brook Park into a thriving company called Radical Farm. It had fallen into really disrepair and sort of decay to some uh, extent. So about four years ago, we set up, we came in, cleaned it out, and set up some hydroponic systems with the aim of really turning into a productive space again for the, the county. Gibbons uses a system of hydroponic farming called nutrient film technique to grow an assortment of baby greens like bok choy, kale, and chard. We're really, we're just managing the growth for about depending on the plant, about three to five weeks. So I see the water running through this pipe, right? And it's streaming down? Exactly. So uh, there are reservoirs underneath each of the tables, and then there's pumps that are just pumping it directly through these cables into the channels. Um, it's just gravity that's taking it down, and it's heading right back into the reservoir. This recirculating water system uses only 10% of the water required in more traditional farming methods, and it reduces dangerous runoff into streams and rivers. It can be harmful for 
plant life both in the streams and also um, in, on the surrounding areas. So we are able to eliminate that, uh, that risk by growing indoors and growing hydroponically. To avoid pesticides, Gibbons uses a system called integrated pest management, which includes things like beneficial insects, uh, crop rotations, making sure that we're planting the proper uh, seeds for the time, proper time of year so we're not forcing it to sort of do things out of seasonality. Feeding the community is the mission of City Green, a farm with locations in Clifton and Patterson. Just off this busy highway in northern New Jersey is an expansive stretch of five acres that's combining organic farming with a civic mission. One of the biggest missions is food access, providing food access to low-income communities. Um, people that don't have access to fresh healthy vegetables. So all of this food grown here is going towards our markets that is providing that food for them. You won't find fertilization, pesticides, or carefully prepared soil on this farm. City Green is using an approach called permaculture, where crops grow in a naturally occurring ecosystem complete with all the weeds, pests, and fungi who call this land home. This is our permaculture food forest, we call it. Um, so essentially, we're trying to develop a forest-like ecosystem here which means we're introducing perennial crops that are beneficial for us, um, such as berries, nuts, and fruit. Um, and we want them to exist in almost like a wild setting where they're kind of taking care of each other. City Green also rotates its crops every year so nutrients aren't depleted from the soil, an approach Anderson would like to see catch on. Traditional farmers are gonna need to start applying sustainable methods um, because our climate is changing so rapidly. It's not secure to be you know, depleting the soil anymore with pesticides or, or even synthetic fertilizers. The more we can let nature work on our side and let the plants be healthy in a natural way, uh, the more healthy they will be in the future. City Green is running a youth education program where kids from Patterson and the area visit, many seeing a farm for the first time.